Alright, we got a pretty big hook on the vise. This is not a trout fly. And I'm telling you here, that is for sure. Uh, this hook is what's called a reworked hook. That's generally what people call it. And what that means is, is that it was originally a completely different hook. This one, this point wasn't up like this. The barb wasn't like that. It, 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 this, it originally was an eyed hook. So, and it originally wasn't this color. And what someone did, and that someone is John Bonacera, he heated the hook up and bent it and twisted it and turned it and filed it and made it look really nice and then did what's called Japaning, which is this black coating. It's like almost like an enamel. Maybe it is an enamel. I'm not really sure if it's considered an enamel, but it's 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 this black, really tough coating that you see on, on old salmon fly hooks. And now we have an incredible, uh, incredible, probably about a 7.0, maybe an 8.0, somewhere in that range hook, which is very hard to come by these days. A, a really big and really good looking hook. This is a skill I wish I had and I'm gonna I'm going to uh, beg John to teach me that this uh, this spring but um, but yeah so we're gonna be tying a fly on this hook and it's a fly that I'm gonna frame and hang up on my wall. I don't have any framed flies for myself. I've I've framed a few of them and I've given them all away. Uh, John has two of them and uh, I think I just I need I need to tie something to frame and put on my wall, and that's why I'm I'm, I'm tying this 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 gigantic this gigantic fly right here. The fly is the major, and just to, also to give you an idea of how big this hook is, this is uh, a warrior, the warrior that I tied from the last salmon fly video. If you didn't watch it, I'll link it at the top. But the um, this is. Uh, you can see how um, this is. I'm not holding this behind. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm holding these. These hooks are in line right here. So if you look right there, it's right up against it. I'll, I'll put it right up against it here. You can see how much bigger this hook is. This was. This on the package said it was a 3 0. I don't. Uh, I don't really think this is a 3 0 hook. It said it was a 3 0, but I think it's more like a. One and a half o or something like that, maybe maybe two o, but it's not a three o. And this is about man. When I look at it here, I feel like it now it's an eight o for sure. It's uh, it's a really big hook, and uh, you when you frame some one of these flies, it it's always good to just tie it as big as possible. But obviously, they didn't fish them. They didn't even fish them that big, that warrior size. They fished them smaller. They always fish the small size. You never. You never see somebody going out there with a hook like this, you know, back in the day. Uh, but yeah, so the major. Now there's a few different, I think, well there's two patterns that are considered the top two major patterns, the major. And one is a Kelson pattern, and one is, I'm not sure who, sure who created it, but it's in the book called Jones Guide to Norway and I'll flash a little picture up of the fly. And that's kind of where I want to go with this pattern. It's, it's, it's a hair different than the Kelson version, but it's also, the style is different. It, the tail is kind of longer. They don't meet like this, like I normally tie. You know, I normally tie, even this, this, this warrior one is, has kind of like a, where the tail and, and, and the topping, they meet. And they create like I usually I call it like a frame. And you're framing the fly, but in 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 the, that Jones Guide to Norway style, the 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 topping is more back here, and the tail is a little bit longer. And that's what we're going to go for. That's what we're going to go for. And um, I've never tied this fly before. And you can see I have a little piece of plastic in here so I don't damage, it's tough to see, but I have a little piece of plastic so I don't da damage the Japaning. And this plastic, um, you ever get one of those like packages of like if you buy like a mat knife or something and it comes in a plastic package that you need a mat knife to get into, so like you buy a mat knife but you need a mat knife to get into the package, uh, that's what this plastic is. It's, it's heavy duty. If you try to use a plastic bag or a piece of paper or something, when you when you grip down on it, 
you're gonna probably rip it or and it's just gonna it's gonna mess up the japanning so try and use one of those pieces of plastic thread so this is a 6-0 Danville white and um, I'm probably gonna switch at some point later but for now 6-0 Danville we gotta get the gut on here so let's Put down a decent layer. Right, Bobbins, if you're watching this, I need a long, I need a long bobbin. All right, uh, gut. This is some some really you can you could probably definitely see how this is some heavy duty stuff right here. John did this too, and uh, I probably took off a little too much here, but I think. Um, yeah, no, I think that's probably perfect. Something that you can do is it, you, you get the middle of it, you figure out where the middle is, and you just get some super glue and you, you get it on here. Make sure you, you wipe it, you don't want it to really cool up and dry. But what this is going to do is it's going to keep it from separating and uh, putting a little at the edge too is nice too. But you can only, you only uh, don't put a little at the edge if you're doing a floss body. This is a fur body. If you do a floss body you actually have to open these up and get them to lay flat because the floss body's got to be flat and smooth. Remember, this has got to be underneath. We're just going to go up quick with like a, some big looping turns, and then we'll put a good size loop here, and we'll figure out where this needs to be cut. Yeah, that's, I think that's all right. We're not going to go too far up. In fact, we're going to go, yeah. Now we're going to make sure that they're next to each other. All right. The tag. The tag is noble silver. I got the John's Guide to Norway up on my screen over here, and I'm uh, just keeping my eye on it. Make sure I do this right. This, um, I'm just using a, a French tinsel here for the back. This one, French oval. Keep them in these bags. Uh, the reason I keep it in the bag is because of the cutoffs I keep in the bag with it, and that's it's absolutely. I mean, this stuff's expensive, so do yourself a favor, get yourself some bags. So I think I've said it before on here, probably a few times. Get yourself some bags, and keep your cutoffs in the bag with the roll. I got it underneath here. You want to put it underneath. And probably we'll hit this with just a hair. One thing I gotta remember here is I'm doing a an 8-O. So everything has gotta be sized up. Boatload of super glue on there. I still put a boatload of super glue. Okay. That first turn I'm making is onto the bear hook because it kind of just gives it a little bit of a taper. And let's make sure that we got this. out of the way. 
And I think I want to do... I'm using some pretty good size tinsel, but I still think I want to do... What is this? Five? That's it right there. Okay, red. I think maybe it's technically scarlet. And that's what I'm using here. Silk. So we're tying it in up here. And then we're going to go back and then forward. And let's cut this off. Trying to get it out of the way and then go up here. Just running it through my fingers to try and get the fibers to come together. Now as you can see it's it's tapered a little bit down here, but I'm gonna go over that. Sure, we're right up against we definitely got some fraying, but that's all right. We're going to take care of that. Let's just take a minute here and clean this up and make sure it's good. Okay, tails, 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 tails. This is something I haven't talked about on the channel. And preparing, preparing tails and toppings. Normally I don't do this. I just take them out of the bag, take them off the head, whatever, and just throw them on there. But in this particular one, I wanted to just straighten them and fluff them up and that sort of stuff. And basically what you're doing is, it's easy if you have a piece of glass or something like this, right? You, you, take, you take a topping or a tail and you dip it in water and then you just lay it on this. And you try and straighten it out and open it up and, and, and you let it dry like that and it takes the twist out of it. And it also uh, gives it more. It gives it the shape that you want, um, but you got to make sure it's wet and it sticks right to the glass. And I got three here. It doesn't take that long to dry either. It, once you open them up, they dry pretty quickly. Got one here that I don't like. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe I got a few here I don't like. All right. Now, I'm really going to try and follow this, uh, this Jones plate pretty good here and it sure looks like that I'm only doing blue and yellow fur to oh geez maybe here and then it starts claret something like that um, the question is when does the claret hackle start I feel like in in Kelson he says to start it at the claret fur which would be like right here. And I think I should probably do that. Even though it sort of looks like it's 
might start a hair earlier, but I don't know. Let's, um, let's not. So, let's get the, let's get the blue fur. It's three different fur, furs here. It's blue. This really, uh, I, it took me a long time to really make a decision on this blue. And it's got yellow, and then it's got this, which is claret. See that? I think this is claret. Yeah. Um, so the first one is going to be a blue. I have like five blues, and this one really looks the closest. Now there's also a couple tinsels in here, but it looks like it starts after the blue. So we're going to put the blue on, and then we're going to tie in the tinsel. It's almost like, let me, get some, let me get some wax here. It's almost like the blue is taking the place of the, the hurl. Oh, there's no ostrich hurl on this. It just goes tail to fur. And it's not a real transitional type of color, blue. And it's a real, in the picture, it's a very, it's a, it's a pretty purplish blue. Which is why I got this. This is not purple, but it, um, it definitely has that sort of, you know, purplish type of hue to it. And purple, or not purple, but blue, like this, into yellow, doesn't make much sense. But if it's in the place of the hurl, like mentally, it maybe it does make a little sense? I'm not sure. But uh, we're going to, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to put the blue on. And we're going to try and really get it to sit good. Let's double check that we, yeah. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do this part too loose. We're gonna really pull this in. And if I want the claret to start, say, about here, somewhere about there, maybe just one more turn of this blue. Yeah, it's just a hair longer than than the than the than the red tag. Okay, let's get this out of here. Now we'll tie in the tinsels. The tinsels, the tinsels, the tinsels. The tinsels are two things. And this is another interesting thing. I have to say, there's a lot of interesting things about this. The, this next interesting interesting thing is, is that it's gold and silver. You never see really gold and silver in the same fly. It's kind of a rare thing. Um, but uh, this one has it. And this one I'm using here is a real other French tinsel. This is a long one. I mean, I'm sorry, this is a wide one. This is, I'm using this one right here, this medium oval Lagerton. Oval, 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 oval. We want this to be, I want it to, to meet, yeah. We want it to be low. Sometimes it helps to just cut it on a little bit of an angle. Okay, that's in there, good. Now we need to, uh, we need to put the yellow in, and then we need to stop and put the claret hackle in, and then we need to put the claret fur in. So something that we've got to remember here. Now let's get the yellow. Good amount of yellow. And let's get this out of our way. Okay. Yellow, yellow, yellow.
remember we need to continue that taper. So it's got to be a you got to put a decent amount right up in here. Now that's a hair longer, but I think it just needs to be two hairs longer. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's good. Um, we can clean this up now or later. Sometimes it's good to clean it up as you go so that things don't get caught. You can always brush it out afterwards, which is what I would do. All right, the hackle, the hackle, the hackle. Um, I am going to use the biggest one I got for this, which is this right here, Claret. Gotta be very careful. Let's make sure that this goes here. You gotta be careful that you don't see I tied it in here, but in actuality it the it doesn't really start to get hackily until back here. So if I didn't if I would have tied it in up there, what would have happened is is that I would have made that first turn and there would have been no hackle, so Gotta always make sure that we we got this tied in. Good. Okay. Now claret. Okay, there it is here. sure we got this correct here. Let's think about this. Yeah, I'm just, I was just double checking my uh, stuff here. I, wanna, I don't want to screw up because once you you screw up here and you keep on going, it's the fly is over. Okay, man, this is going to take a, an entire bag of claret. <laughs> this is going to take so much claret. Oh my god. I mean, it's just such a weird color mixture that you really gotta just, you gotta, you gotta always, I mean, you gotta look at that thing. I mean, it, it's true. And even in the, Kel the Kelson one is even weirder because it goes back to blue, I think. I think it goes blue, yellow, claret, blue. Right. I don't know. I have to look it up. I'm, I'm not even following a recipe. I'm just following a picture. But, ooh, ooh we're going too far. We're going too far. For sure, we're going too far. Yeah, yeah, we're going too far here. All right, let's let's get rid of this. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's do this first, and we'll look at what we got here. Turn it here. That's correct. And then this next one has to meet the hackle. And it looks like it's supposed to be
before we it's always a bad idea to cut that where I was going to cut it cut it here first this way you have to go back and rearrange it or move it or something you can but it's not in your way so let's do this Make sure that we got it I gotta go back here. I gotta go back. Just gotta go back. Right in the beginning. This turn I feel like is not correct. You really want to turn it on to the flat tinsel and then let it naturally slide over. That's what you really want to do. off. Cut this here and take a look. Yeah. Mm. Right here looks... Yeah. Alright, that's okay. Okay, this is tied good. need a whole bunch of room over here. It looks like we got a lot of room, but we, we, we need it. Um, first, let's get this thing on here. And we just got to make it to the top. And then we should be okay. We can put another one on right there. That's all we need. If you don't have a long enough, like I didn't have a long enough hackle to make it all the way, that's that's all right. Um, you don't need a long enough one. You to you just got to you just needed a long enough one to get it to the top, and then you can put another one on. We're going to give it a couple of turns. Let's cut this. And then we're going to... Let's use this. We'll go over it to make it lay flat. I think we just need... You know... We need a decent amount. I mean, it's a big fly, so let's let's just go two turns. Okay, I gotta take care of my desk. This stuff everywhere. Yeah. The wing. The wing is a whole bunch of wacky stuff. Um, the big part is the tippet, uh, the tippet feathers, and if you saw in that picture they're pretty high up. I'm not gonna really, I don't really want to do them that high. I mean, a little high is okay, but I don't want to do them that high. I also saw that there's a claret hackles in there too, and they're supposed to be on the outside of the the tippet. So you would think, okay, you gotta put the tippet on first and then you gotta put the the claret hackles on. But I actually think that that's a mistake. Let me take some of these thread turns off. I actually think that's a mistake. And the reason I think that's a mistake is is that I feel like it's not gonna lay right. If you try and put them on the outside. 
So first things first is I'm going to make sure this is I need to be starting out back here. Good amount. Yeah. And then let's make sure it's even. Okay. Now we're gonna take these two. We're gonna put them on first, which doesn't make much sense, but I think it'll make sense once I I, I have it all together because I think I can bend these stems so that they they go into the right place. Okay, so now we're going to put So now I got two really big um, tivet feathers, and I'm going to put them in here, and I'm going to tie them in so they're on top of the claret, the stems, but I think they'll just bend around, at least I'm hoping that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's now I just got to make sure that these things are... Okay, the next thing is... is something you'd never see, and I, I'm fairly certain this is the only fly that has this in it, is um, it's feather... well, it's actually a snipe feather. This is not a snipe feather. This is a uh, this is a wood duck feather. At least I'm fairly certain about that. I have three of them. I've been trying to figure out what the best one to use are. I need two. That one's that one's pretty good, I have to say. And here's the other one. Now this one's pretty big. Now one thing you can do is these feathers are really big. But if you lick your fingers and just over and over and over and over, you just just mash this thing into the shape that you want it. And once it dries, it'll basically stay like that. But you gotta just work the hell out of this thing. Yeah. Right. And this is not that long. They show it up to like the first bar right here. Up to like the first, the first, the first bar. So not very long. I think, I think this is, yeah, I'm going to use this one that I got right here on my side. And we'll use this one on your side. Yeah. That's all right from my side. Let me get your side in here. So I think I need to twist it. So something, if you put it on and it's always 
wants to like tilt on you. Like this one wants to tilt on me this way. Well, take it and twist it. And give it a real good twist. And that should bring it back around for you. Or you could twist it the wrong way like I just did and it'll get worse. Make sure you twist it the right way. <laughs> Man, that is a wacky fly. This thing is so strange. Very strange stuff. Okay, let's get these in place here and make sure they stay. I can't believe how much left it's. I mean, I gotta do so much more stuff here. We need to put the Cory on and we need to put the Argus. Now this is where, this is why this is, there's like a, a, you know, this is a tough fly to do, this big. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's tough fly to do this big. I mean, obviously these, these weird feathers you got here, those are tough to find, but you can find them. In fact, I didn't even get these. I had them in a drawer somewhere. I must have bought like a big lot of stuff and... And, and these were in there. And I never knew what they were, but I knew that they were strange. So I put them all, I had three of them. This is, this is the third one. I had them all and I just threw them in a bag. And I was like, you know what? So at some point in time, I'm gonna need these for something. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna need this for something. And then one day, my friend John uh, Bonacera, he was like, he, he was talking to me about this fly, the Major, and how it has these strange things. And it showed me the picture, I was like, dude, I was like, I think I have that. And I grabbed the little bag out of it and I was like, here it is. So, um, but that, that I think is gettable. It's it's findable. The, the part that is really hard is, um, it's not the Argus, it's this Cory. Because you need Cory that is massive. Um, and you need something like this right here. At, um, that's it right there. This is not easy to come by. The Argus part, and there's only two two parts in here in the in the Guide to Norway one. There's only two, which is this Argus right here. So an Argus tail feather. You really only get them in in these slips like this because they're only in a few flies. One is uh, a fly called the Shannon, which I've tied. And the other is this one, and I can't really think of another well-known one that's got this in it. Um, but we need a we need a good bit here. We'll do we'll do my side first. We need a good bit, um, probably taking off four here. So, what is it? Is it going to attach for me? That's the question. I mean, even if it. All right. Well. That's my side right there. So, that's good. Yeah. All right. So, let's get this stuff on here. I guess what I can do is I can I can put it together, align them. It does look like my side really doesn't want to connect.
Is it even? It's fairly even. Okay. Now, let's get this, let's get these down. Just got to put it on and pray. All right, let's let's do it. All right, before we get any further, let's hold it and see. I think it's going to be okay. Get our scissors. And let's get our wax that we should have put on. And let's get our super glue because we're not screwing around. And let's tie this in. Okay. Yeah. think that that's okay. I have to say, I was thinking about this fly and I said, you know, this thing isn't that bad. I bet you I could do this on video. I am regretting that um, big time right now. <laughs> I'm absolutely regretting doing this on video right now because this thing is a real pain in the ass for sure this thing is a pain in the ass and I I would um, if if I could take back this video right now I would um, but we are so deep into this we got to make it happen here okay we really need to stay in this area right here and then um, and we also need to start using a lot less turns to put things in. Let's get back to about here. I'm using a sub. It's uh, for this. Is this supposed to be chatter over here? It's not much. Now I'm just, I just lick these to keep all the fibers together. They'll open up again. Obviously. Um, pretty good length and I'm just gonna put two in get this one and where's the uh, I think it's like this then I'm gonna take this turn away and immediately put it back so I put So that's three turns to hold the two feathers on. I can put two more feathers on. I was going to put just one, but you know what? I'm going to put two more on, but I'm going to actually... I'm actually... Two more on? <laughs> I'm going to put two more on. And I'm going to put two more feathers on. Yeah. Just to brighten it up a little bit. do one on this side as well, on my side. Uh, 
Okay, so two feathers now. All right, so the throat, the first throat, there's two one, there's two of them. The first one, I believe, is Gadwell or Teal or something. In 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 the Kelson recipe, he calls it Galena, which is Galena. Is that how you say it? Which is essentially just a hen chicken. But in Norway, it looks very white. So I think I'm just going to use a. I'm going to use a Gadwell. Um, but a, a fairly light Gadwell. And we're not going to turn it on. But we are going to use a good amount, that is for sure. I, um, I feel like that is long enough, but I feel like it's not enough. But, yeah, so this one, we don't want that. So, yeah, I think the length there is good now. And then we'll just bring this up. A few good turns in there. And we'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I like it. One thing that can happen if you're not careful is you can you can by accident stab the gut with your scissors and that can open it up but if you put that super glue on it like I showed in the beginning it'll help man how much how many fibers of throat did I put on here Jesus I think I just need to give it a little hit it with my nail just to separate it break it up now the question is, is that, do I have enough, um, do I have enough room? Do I have enough, uh, yellow hackle? So I need the longest yellow hackle ever grown <laughs> on a chicken. That's what I need. Now if you saw that, that, that picture there, it, um, it's on it's on the, it's all the way around so we're just gonna throw it on here and we're gonna probably only do one turn I think and if you notice I left the stem because I'm gonna tie them both in at the same time so it's a good little trick to save some uh, turns here so Essentially, now we're tying in the tip and the stem, and I didn't waste too many turns tying in the first part. I think it's, it's it's not bad. Let's go back a little bit further. This is going to be tough to uh, get in here, but I think we should. Now, if you notice, there's not there's no turns here, and there's a whole lot of turns here. So we really need to kind of build up this part. So that it 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 sort of meets it, not 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 totally, but because we got to put a bunch of things here, and if it's too sloped, we'll we'll never get them on here. 
Oh, we got Watson barking. Great. Let's go back to our little, our little uh, piece of. This is plastic. This isn't glass. I have my three that I laid out here, and they're all pretty much the same. So we're just gonna make sure that this one is good. And now, if you notice here, I'm not going all the way. I'm leaving that little tail. I'm not trying to meet it like that. And I am. I am going to make sure. Got to try and put two on. Yeah. Tell you what, I'm getting tired. It's getting hot in this room. I'm getting tired. Okay. Ooh, let me tie this in a little bit more. Oh, there we go. Let's get some wax on here. And we probably shouldn't clean this up. There's some things that need to be done. To this fly before it's actually looking, I would say, really good. Um, but um, first things first, let's finish it. And we just got to make sure that we are in the right spot. Okay. Ooh, ooh. We crushed this one, but it should be, it'll be all right. Okay, third battery, and now the second SD card. <laughs> we gotta wrap this up. No horns. No horns on this thing, and uh, which is you know, strange. But there's horns on the Kelson one. There's no horns on this one. We're just gonna put the hurl on and that's it. We're done. And I'm just gonna build this up a hair. And then we're gonna tie it off maybe halfway, so. Sure, it turns. Oh, we got it going the right way the first time. This is amazing. Okay. It is slipping here, but 
go back to this. that it hurls on there. Yeah. I don't want to go nuts with it. good. Let's, let's whip finish this thing off. So just if you use a you know a, a bobkin, that really brings it out. It sounds crazy that it brings it out more than uh, you know one of those brushes, but it does. You got to be careful about how much it brings it out. Yeah. All right. I think this is for me, for me. I mean, you know, not for some of these like ridiculous amazing sound flight tire people. I mean, for me, this is a a a, a frame-worthy fly. I mean, it um there's no like very clear errors. Um you know, obviously, someone who's incredible at this stuff would make it look better. But as far as mistakes, I don't see any mistakes. Like, flat-out errors. Um, I'm just take this thing out of here. That plastic really works good. I mean, I had that thing gripped so tight. And there's, I mean, it's also good Japaning, too. John's Japaning is good. Yeah. So we are straight. I would say that's fairly straight. And um, oh, you've never seen you haven't seen my side. Same, right? No difference there. The tail is really is annoying me seems to it's hitting the um, the tippet and it's causing it to like separate because the tippet is pretty low which is I like that I like how low it is yeah yeah well I have to say I'm I'm happy with this I mean, for me, I mean, I'm not some expert salmon fly tire. Um, I can tie them. I think, I think, uh, essentially, um, you need two things to tie a. 
I would say, a fairly good looking salmon fly, you need two things. Uh, the first thing is you need patience, and the second thing is is that you need thread skills for sure. You need to you need to know what you're doing with thread. Those two things, you put those together, you can make a, a really good looking salmon fly. To make those those the ones that you see with people are just freaking flat out like Rod and Kish, if you look at his stuff, it's just freaking every single fiber is absolutely perfect. Um, I mean, you need extraordinary skills, and you need the best possible material out there. Those two things added to the, you know, patience and good thread skills. I mean, if you put those four things together, I mean, you could be just a freaking legend. But, um, I mean, truthfully, uh, it takes. I mean, I I I I don't want to say it could take you a lifetime. Meaning you could do it in a lifetime. I mean, I I kind of think that you need um some sort of crazy natural ability to to do what um you see some of these people do. And there's a guy on 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 Instagram. I can't really pronounce his name, but I'll actually I'll put it up on the screen. And John and I, we send these this guy's pictures back and forth all the time. It's just unbelievable. Uh, Magster, I think I don't really know how to say it, but that's that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, the guy is ridiculous. I mean, he's just flat out ridiculous. He's so good. There's another guy, um, Bent, nineteen sixty seven, I think is his name. I'll find that one too. I'll put that up on the screen. But that guy's incredible. There's a lot of incredible people. Um, but for me, personally, I would say that this is... Um, I would say this is the best I can do as of this moment. For sure. I don't, I don't think I can do any better than this. I mean, maybe if I wasn't worrying about the camera and stuff, maybe I could do it a little bit better. But I do kind of feel like I... I hit, um, you know, I hit a, home, a minor league home run with this, <laughs> with this one. I think it's, I think it's looking pretty good. I think it's, I underestimated this fly for absolute certainty. I underestimated how hard this fly was. I looked at this thing and I was like, you know what? No problem. I mean, I could, I, I bet you I could do this. It's not going to be an issue, but it, it, it's an issue. And, um, it's this this is not an easy one. I thought that this was gonna be half as hard as it was. Um it was frustrating with all those stems. They they add up. They add up quick those stems. Uh it really can I mean I don't know if you noticed how many times I was going back. I was going back so many times uh to try and just if I kept going forward, I would have been. We would have had an eleven L fly. <laughs> I would have had to have welded something onto the end of this thing, because it's just so. Um, there's just so many stems. You got to. There's so many things you got to put on. You really got to put them on top of each other. You got to go, and then go back, and go, and then go back. And if you notice, if you remember, back to when I put the tippet on, the tippet wing, I put that z-bend in it and then I went on top of it and I went back this way if I didn't do that it, we would be finished so this is a good one and toppings I think I'm glad I went with three now that it's over I, I think I am glad I went with three I think it needed three it's it's big fly so I think it needed three so I, I it would have been a mistake to do two for sure it would have been a mistake all right Jones Guide to Norway the major on a, I would say this is an 8.0 rework hook from John Bonacera. And uh, I know this is a long video, so I appreciate you watching if you watch to the end. Thanks a lot, everyone. See ya.